Uh, well, good morning, everyone. And uh, uh, my name is Bob Vigursky. And um, I want to first thank uh, Dr. Sabu Banchi for uh, inviting me to speak at this prestigious conference and thank the, uh, the organizers of the conference for allowing me to tell you about the 780G in some detail. And I want to thank the chairpersons as well for uh, organizing this uh, special guest lecture. And at the end, uh, hopefully we'll have some time for questions. So uh, I'm going to get started uh, right away and, and show you just very briefly a pathway that's happened over the last 15 years in uh, insulin pump therapy that really Medtronic has been the, in the vanguard of and really been uh, for even longer than that, perhaps 20 to 30 years, uh, been really the first uh, company that's commercialized and perfected some of these pump systems. And as you can see, you may be familiar with a lot of these that are manual pumps, uh, the hybrid closed loop, first hybrid closed loop system, uh, 670G and, and its successor 770G uh, have been around now for uh, at, at least uh, four to five years. And what I'm going to talk about is the, uh, the advanced hybrid closed loop, um, which um, is uh, this one that's circled. And um, the, uh, there are some unique characteristics of this, uh, one of which is that in addition to having auto basal every five minutes, it has auto correction every five minutes. The target is 100 milligrams per deciliter. It can be 110 or 120. The 670 and 770 were 120. It has a, an adjustable active insulin time between two and eight hours. And I'm gonna show you some data about the importance of being able to use that as actually a tuning mechanism for uh, the um, aggressiveness of the algorithm. And then uh, just most recently, uh, we've had approval in Europe of our Guardian 4 sensor, which is a no calibration, non-adjunctive sensor. Uh, so that's uh, what we're going to be talking about. And I want to just show you how this uh, additional new algorithm in the 780G works. And this is a very simple cartoon that shows if you, on the left, if you don't have diabetes in the green line and you eat a meal, your blood sugar never goes up above 140. If you have diabetes and you eat a meal and don't take a bolus, your sugar goes up over the next hour to two hours, can be depending on the meal in the 200s, 300s, or even higher. With the hybrid closed loop system, the 670 and 770G, uh, as the sugar goes up, if you don't take a bolus, there's some mitigation by uh, many auto basal boluses that are every five minutes. And you can see that mitigates the postprandial rise. The new feature and very important feature of the next generation advanced hybrid closed loop or 780G is that superimposed uh, on the auto basal every five minutes, there's auto correction. And so there, while there's limitation to the amount of auto basal, there's very wide uh, limits uh, that are set for the amount of auto correction. So you get further mitigation of the postprandial rise or any rise for that matter, uh, it will kick in. So the pivotal study for this uh, was completed uh, last year and was just accepted for di uh, publication in Diabetes Technology and Therapeutics. And, uh, and it was consisted of a run-in period of 14 days. It was a safety study, primarily. Uh, the, uh, the subjects were on either sensor augmented pump with or without predictive low glucose management, or they were on 670G. When they, were, they were, went into the study phase, they were randomized the first half either to a target of 100 uh, or 5.6 millimoles or 120 or 6.7. And then after 45 days, they were crossed over into the opposite target range. Uh, and then the study ended. What the results were, uh, were quite uh, impressive. Uh, the run-in on the left, the, the study phase on the right, there were 157 subjects. 97% of the time they were in auto mode their A1C reduced by a half a percent from 7.5 to 7. Uh, the mean sensor glucose from 154 to 148. And 
since we uh, are all familiar with the times and ranges, you can see that there was a, a significant increase in time and range to almost 75%, with a reduction in time above range and a reduction, a significant reduction in time below range. Now, this was for the entire group. And you can see how this looks in a little bit different in adolescents and adults. So the gray is during the running phase and the pink in the study phase. And you can see for the 100 uh, milligram target uh, on the upper two panels, the, uh, the, there was a significant reduction overnight in the adolescents, even more so than in the adults. Uh, but different, uh, the adolescents were different than the adults because adolescents eat all the time during the day. And, uh, and they don't always take their boluses, but this is the effect of the autocorrection that I'll show you more details about uh, kicking in. So you limit the uh, hyperglycemia during the day, more so than with adults who uh, are more uh, adherent to taking their boluses. The same pattern is seen with the higher uh, target uh, uh, of 120. Now, I mentioned that active insulin time, and this, uh, I think, is very, a very important concept. Here in this, uh, in this system, active insulin time is not the insulin on board. The algorithm uh, uses the physiology of what we know about insulin half-life, but you can fool the algorithm by telling it it's actually shorter. And what was done in this study was we looked at the, uh, the results of time and range and time below range in people who had active insulin times of greater than four hours, three to four hours, two to three hours, and two hours. And what you can see is that if you set that active insulin time at two hours, you can get a time and range of almost 79%. What that two hours means is that the, uh, because the algorithm thinks that the insulin on board is actually shorter, uh, it can become more aggressive in delivering more autocorrection. And as you can see uh, below, the time below range actually doesn't get worse. It actually gets better uh, as, the, uh, as, the, uh, uh, as the algorithm gets more aggressive. Now, that's only in 157 patients. Uh, this technology was introduced in Europe uh, last uh, year. And now we have experience with over 12,000 subjects. I'm going to show you the data uh, with in three ways. I'm going to show you a post uh, uh, AHCL or 780 cohort. That means everybody who is currently using it who had 10 or more days of sensor glucose data after starting auto mode or initiating the, the algorithm, uh, uh, which we now call safeguard. And there were almost 13,000 of those people to date. Uh, the, um, there's a longitudinal cohort Within that, these are people who had greater than 10 days of sensor glucose in each of the first six months after initiating. And remember, this was just uh, introduced into Europe uh, late last year. And then we have uh, some pre-post comparison before turning on uh, auto mode uh, and after uh, with at least 10 days of use. Uh, and there were about 3,000 of those. So here's the data of the 12,870. Time in auto mode or safeguard is 92%, mean sensor glucose 145, the GMI is 6.8. And as you can see, the time and range is very much uh, almost identical to that seen in the pivotal trial, which of course gives us great confidence that what we saw in just 157 patients can be reproduced in a much larger, ten, tenfold more, uh, greater number of people. And you can see the time below range is actually even better. And on the right, you see the percent of users achieving the various glycemic goals. Three quarters of the people achieved the GMI less than seven and a time and range greater than 70% and 83% a time below range of less than 4%. And the composite outcomes were equally impressive. And if you're a health system, a payer, uh, whether it's commercial or government, if you can achieve these kinds of uh, ranges, uh, time and ranges, time below ranges in a population, uh, that's really quite impressive. And, 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 and people should really take notice, I think, of this, that this is not only a solution for an individual, but also for a population. Now, 
Across Europe, uh, we looked at what the results were in various countries. The first uh, bar set of bars are all the 12,870. I just showed you this data. And then in descending order of number of people from Italy all the way down to Slovenia, you can see that the time and range in the, in the, in the green bars uh, was pretty much the same. There's some minor variation, uh, but almost everyone is getting in the mid 70s. There's one exception here of, of exactly 70, but there are also some uh, countries in which their, uh, their uh, patients are reaching into the low 80s. And again, time below range, quite low throughout all these different countries. Now, looking at those uh, comparing the same people pre uh, initiation of auto mode and then after turning on uh, the algorithm, you can see that there's an 11.4% improvement in time and range and a 0.4% decrease in time below range. Uh, and uh, again, a GMI now down to 6.8%. And then just to show that this can be sustained, these are 2,500 people uh, who have used this for six months. And you can see that the time in range uh, is in the high 70s throughout the six months, showing the durability of the effect of this, uh, this system uh, in this uh, patient population. And to give you a, a, a sense of how this is working, before initiation of uh, this 780G algorithm, uh, the 46% uh, of the total daily dose was delivered by the system. So that meant by the, uh, the auto basal and 20%, uh, uh, I'm sorry, 20 units, the 50, rest of the 54% were, was delivered uh, manually by, uh, by bolusing. When you're in the auto mode phase or safeguard use, uh, you can see there's an addition of six units of insulin. And so now adding that six units from the auto correction to the auto basal, now, 57% uh, of all the insulin is delivered automatically by the system. And I think the more automation we can achieve in uh, insulin delivery, overall, the better res results we'll have on average. Now, this is a busy slide, but it really shows you the same kind of data I showed you before about time and range and how the active insulin time affects it. And if you look in the upper right hand, uh, I'm sorry, upper right hand uh, uh, table, you see that by tuning the algorithm down to a two hour uh, active insulin time with a target of 100, that you get 80.7% time in range and 2.9% time below range. And these results are uh, even better than what we saw in the pivotal trial. Now, we don't have data uh, that has been analyzed by age yet, but I wanna show you two studies that have been recently uh, uh, presented uh, at the Diabetes Technology and uh, 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 Therapeutics. They're, they're, the abstracts are in Diabetes Technology and Therapeutics. They were presented at ATTD a few months ago. And this is a study by Scaramuzza from Italy in 25 children uh, who were either at baseline on 670, MDI, and, and just CGM. And so they were in open loop for 14 days and their uh, time and range was 69%. And after three months, their time and range was 82% with just 1% time below range. So here a GMI now is 6.2%. And I think it's particularly uh, important to Note that this is in children who are uh, age, uh, median, median age 14, often the most difficult group to treat. And here's another study that was uh, also uh, presented at ATTD this year, also in pediatrics. And this is from Qatar, uh, where Goran Petrovsky uh, has decamped to set up a diabetes uh, clinic in that country. And he took, uh, compared his experience with 670G in 30 children, age 10, which, in which they went from uh, uh, MDI plus CGM uh, time and range of 46.9% up to almost 75%. And now with 34 children, median, mean age 12 and a half, going from 42% MDI CGM 
uh, up to almost 79%. These are different uh, patients uh, using different technologies, but in the same clinic with the same teaching and onboarding. And I think this gives us a sense of how uh, in children, in uh, the, in people who understand and can use the tech and teach how to use the technology, even children uh, in the uh, 10 to 12 year age range can get excellent results. Now, getting glycemic results is not just what we're trying to aim for. We know that uh, diabetes uh, uh, gives uh, incurs a lot of burden to the patient. Here's uh, a, a young uh, patient trying to uh, figure out how many grams of carbs uh, that he's going to have for lunch. And, and we know that carb counting is very burdensome uh, for 76% of the people, that patients with uh, uh, type 1 diabetes may miss at least two meal boluses a week, if not more, and that carbs are generally underestimated by two-thirds of the people. So how do we uh, manage that? Well, this algorithm which has that autocorrection mitigates some of that, as I showed you earlier. So in this, uh, this is a, a paper that was presented uh, uh, last year uh, from Israel in which they uh, uh, used uh, 14 people, a small study, who and gave them 780G and said, go home for three months and don't do any meal bolusing unless the meal has more than 80 grams of carbohydrate. They did, uh, were allowed to do salvage boluses uh, if the glucose rose over 250. Uh, here, the set point was 100 and active insulin time was two hours. And as I said, 14 patients, uh, mean age 44, and almost 90% of the time they were in auto mode. Now, this is a very uh, busy slide, but I've uh, circled here what uh, I think is really remarkable. So, uh, uh, there were a total of 3,300 unannounced meals. So they were not giving boluses. Uh, 2,700 of them were successful and didn't require a salvage bolus correction. In fact, the number of salvage boluses were about three per, per participant per week. And guess, uh, not guess what, but here is the time and range, almost 68% time and range without doing anything. And I think this really tells us, and the time below ranges were very low as well. And I think this points out uh, where we're going in the future. And the future is there will be people who want to do as little as possible to manage their diabetes. And they're still with this technology going to get a pretty decent time and range of almost 68%. And then there'll be people who are bolusing and carb counting accurate, accurately, and they're gonna get time and ranges in the uh, low 80%. So where do we go from here? Well, in development now is our, our personalized closed loop, which has this automatic meal handling and enhancement of what I just showed you, and it will have a disposable sensor, and this has been designated as a breakthrough design, device by the, uh, the FDA in the United States. And what, are the thing, what does this have? What are the system enhancements? Well, the burden of carb counting is going to be reduced by using a, an app on a, either a smartwatch or even just a wristband that has an accelerometer, accelerometer and it will use uh, gestures to understand when someone is eating and be able to auto bolus uh, as the meal begins. It, it will learn from the individual based on the gestures and the glucose rises, when, whether or not this constitutes a meal and how big the meal is and how long it lasts. Um, in addition, this will be personalized, meaning that there'll, all the data, uh, and you mentioned 780G uh, has uh, Bluetooth technology, so all the data goes to the cloud where it will be compared to a, what we call a digital twin. The algorithm will be tweaked and tested to make sure any, any changes are uh, are actually safe and more effective. And that new algorithm will be sent back automatically to the pump and, uh, and the pump algorithm will be updated. And this will happen iteratively every two or three weeks. And there's, we're in feasibility trials for this as we speak. And the new, there will be a new sensor, which is a disposable sensor uh, that uh, will be another enhancement uh, of this system. And finally, uh, the 
final enhancement is a technology that just uh, achieved both FDA approval and CE mark, uh, and this is an extended wear infusion set. And with uh, using some proprietary technology, uh, we've been able to show uh, in a very large pivotal trial that uh, people with diabetes can use this infusion set for up to seven days instead of the usual two to three days. So this not only reduces the burden of diabetes, just like the, uh, the meal handling capabilities that we're introducing, but also reduces plastic waste and may actually save insulin uh, because you're not, you're not uh, changing the infusion set and priming the, the tubing every two to three days, but only once uh, every week. So <clears throat> this is what the system will look like, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the Guardian 4 sensor uh, currently approved in Europe, uh, and this entire system is under review by the FDA as we speak. So again, in summary, it will uh, auto-correct uh, uh, with no finger sticks. It's going to do that auto-correction every five minutes. So on and off is very quick, and, and that's one of the safety uh, uh, features of this algorithm. Uh, carb counts uh, are... We're not recommending that people don't do carb counting, but if you don't do it or you underestimate or you forget a meal dose, this algorithm has your back uh, and uh, it prevents highs and lows with less work and of course, the longer wear for the infusion set. So I wanna thank you for allowing me again to, to tell you about this technology and I'll be happy to answer any questions with the time remains.